The Sonic.exe community is one that I've only been a part of for a short time, but feels like I've been fascinated with for a while. Sonic.exe started off as a simple edit of the title screen for 1991's Sonic the Hedgehog, where Sonic had black bleeding eyes and the water behind him was red. Eventually, it evolved into a creepypasta written by JC the Hyena, telling the tale of a haunted PC port of the aforementioned Sonic game. The creepypasta in question was really bad. It was made up of cliches and cliches only, containing no narrative worth whatsoever and being way too on the nose. Despite this, the pasta got very popular, and it gained a large community over a decade with the fans having done amazing things with the concept. But why? The original creepypasta was one of the most abysmal things the internet has ever seen. Why is it so popular, even after a decade? He instead lived on in the hearts and minds of none other than... children. Yeah, the kids never really stopped eating this shit up. I beg to defer, LS Mark. You're forgetting one thing about children. They grow up. Now as teens and young adults, one thing the Sonic.exe community did was make their own versions of the character, commonly referred to as EXEs. Among all these fan creations, one thing was clear. It was possible for Sonic, the lovable blue blur hedgehog that captured the hearts of millions, to be scary. This was possible through the quirkiness known as character design. This may sound strange at first, because the original Sonic.exe just had his eyes recolored. Not the biggest innovation in character design. So to understand the achievements of the Sonic.exe community, we need to go back. All the way back to the origins of Sonic the Hedgehog himself. It's the late 1980s. Nintendo was dominating the video game market. Another electronics company by the name of Sega wanted to do the impossible and compete. To start, they felt like they needed their own mascot. Someone that could represent the company. Someone that could rival Mario. While Sega was discussing candidates for an appealing character, one of the ideas that came up was a hedgehog. Designer Naoto Oshima was on a trip in New York, and while he was there, he went around showing the public some concepts he came up with for a character and asked them which one they liked best. Sure enough, the Hedgehog was the most popular pick by a landslide. They started building off of it. See, Sonic's purpose was to have an appealing character design, different from anything anyone had ever seen until that point. They succeeded. Just look at the blue blur. Can you say you've seen anything like this anywhere else in media? He has distinct character design traits that make him who he is. The round and ovally torso, his skinny limbs, his gloves, his slick shoes, the spikes on the back of his head, the eyes! Of course, they didn't design Sonic for the sole purpose of being different. If that was the main goal, he'd look like a mess. Instead, they wanted to convey personality through his design. Sega had a chart of keywords that they felt fit the company, and they wanted their character to represent those keywords. Take a look at a few of these. Cool, reckless, freedom. Those definitely sound like Sonic, do they not? It's definitely apparent nowadays with his sassy attitude but triumphant heroism. Keep in mind though, Sonic did not convey these traits through speech back then. His design had to say it all. I'd say they did pretty damn well. The shoes, gloves, and spikiness definitely convey cool. And being a hedgehog who runs fast with his shoes certainly conveys freedom and recklessness. The cherry on top was the fact that he was blue, which was Sega's main color. To round it off, Sega wanted to imply that this character had history. They thought of iconic comic book characters and how everyone knew them for their history. An example being how everyone knew Spider-Man was bitten by a spider and got his Uncle Ben killed due to his responsibility. I'm not sure how many people know about this, but here's the backstory that Sonic was originally going to have. There was once a world-famous pilot that flew at incredible speeds, implied to have flown during World War II. He flew so fast that his hair always stood up and was behind him, which led to people calling him a hedgehog. He wore a jacket that had an emblem of Sonic on it, the same emblem also being on his plane. The man got married to a famous author one day, and she went on to create children's stories about Sonic the Hedgehog, one of the stories being depicted by the first game in 1991. For Sonic, gameplay came secondary. The primary goal was to create this character. With all these factors of character design philosophy in mind, the ultimate goal was for Sonic to be shaped like a friend. Not just any friend, however. When I think of characters that are shaped like a friend, I think of Kirby and Riolu. Sonic wasn't just a friend, he was your friend. It was the same appeal that made Tails look up to him so much in the second game. That's where things get cruel. 
As mentioned earlier, Sonic.exe was created in 2011 when someone edited the title screen of his first game to give him pitch black eyes with red pupils and have him cry blood. The sky was also colored gray and the water was red. It's kinda unclear who made this image. I did some research on my own and it's implied to be JC the Hyena. If anyone can prove me wrong in the comments, feel free to do so. Anywho, JC was inspired, or perhaps he inspired himself, to make this into something greater. He whipped up a story, uploaded it to the Creepypasta wiki, and dubbed it Sonic.exe, named after the fact that the story was about a haunted PC port of Sonic's first game. The story featured many cliches, hyper-realistic blood, and a narrative with zero captivation. Yeah, the story was pretty bad. It eventually got taken off of the Creepypasta wiki for these problems, and was moved to the Trollpasta wiki. JC wasn't too happy about this, but hey, I wouldn't be either. That's pretty harsh. Anywho, a year later, a game developer by the name of MY5T Crimson made a game that depicted how the haunted game from the story played out, and they did so very faithfully. It was just a silly little project, but it blew the hell up. Among everything, I once found myself questioning it all. Why? Sonic is the lovable blue blur that goes fast and has fun gameplay. What on earth is the appeal of making a scary story about Sonic that forsakes anything that has to do with him? Eventually, I found my answer, which is why I'm making this video. First off, it's not like Sonic doesn't have any scary source material himself. There was plenty. The main thing that comes to mind is that drowning theme of his. In the games, Sonic can't swim, spend too much time underwater, and a really fucking jarring theme starts playing. Sega Genesis chimes kick in as the tempo gradually gets faster and faster while a timer above Sonic's head counts down to his death, ushering the player to get some oxygen. This is out of nowhere, to say the least. It's so disruptive having this theme play and completely interrupting the current music with zero transition, and the theme itself is unnecessarily anxiety inducing. This theme was utilized both in the Sonic.exe game and in the original Creepypasta. As for some honorable mentions, there was the screen that would appear every now and then when you complete a level in the first Sonic game if the system thinks you're playing on an illegal copy. Instead of the cheery music and transition into the next stage, you get text that reads illegal instruction, followed by a bunch of numbers while a strange sound plays. Definitely unsettling, especially for the little folks. And who could forget the secret message in Sonic CD? In the sound test for that game, if you entered a certain code, you would stumble upon this screen. The Japanese text reads, Fun is infinite, with Sega Enterprises, signed by Majin. Majin is a nickname for Masato Nishimura, who was a designer for Sonic CD, and the Sonics in the background depict his face. It was meant to be a fun little message, saying that Sonic games are fun, but it definitely came off as unsettling instead. It didn't help that the music playing in the background was the boss theme, which was different between America and Japan. The American version was much creepier, with a sinister laugh as the cherry on top. Libby, did you just turn some music off? There's also the Sonic Schoolhouse game. Definitely made Sonic's character design less appealing and more uncanny. This is going to be important for later. And the entire existence of Tails Doll? I'm mentioning these things to stress that there are scary elements to go off of in the original Sonic games, so that could explain the appeal of a scary Sonic story. Sonic.exe, however, was more than those things. In the previous segment, I mentioned that Sonic, at his core, is supposed to be your friend. His character traits are supposed to convey this. He's supposed to be cool. Now with his eyes bleeding, one of these cool traits has been twisted. According to Sonic's first origin story, he's supposed to be the hero of a children's book. A story! A creepypasta is also a story. And in this story, he's no longer your friend. Tails holds a deep admiration for Sonic, much like us. Though suddenly, we see our childhood hero and friend bestow the person closest to him with the most unimaginable fate. Who is this guy? Is he still Sonic? What's going on? And then we have Knuckles, Sonic's rival. 
When attacked by this entity, Knuckles fights back, just like a true rival would. It's only then that we learn that this is no friendly sparring session, and Knuckles realizes it too late. And Eggman, oh boy, that man is always suffering defeat at the hands of Sonic. But to be sought out while standing idle, and to be executed in such a fashion? This isn't Sonic. This thing contradicts everything we knew about Sonic. Also, while the gameplay of the adaptation created by Crimson could be seen as an insult to the Sonic games, I think it works pretty well. Recall that Sonic is about freedom, and the gameplay reflects that. Sonic Team wanted to make the stages feel like your playground. Whatever entity this imposter is, he makes it very clear that this is his world, and in this world, he is God. It creates more unfamiliarity, and you can't help but wonder whatever happened to Sonic, the one we know and love. It pairs well with the fact that a lot of these Sonic.exe stories involve toying with the real world. I should also mention that Sonic was created with gameplay as the last priority, with the first being appeal. Crimson's game plays by that philosophy. I'm not gonna pretend that just any form of symbolism equals good writing, but the unfamiliarity scared the hell out of kids, and helped Sonic.exe, or X for short, make a name for himself. X is not Sonic, and he never will be. His world goes against everything Sonic believed in. However, as I mentioned earlier, kids grow up. Sonic.exe should have died with their youth, so why didn't it? It's because we looked back. We saw more potential in the concept. X still had Sonic's cartooniness about him. With his proportions and silly attire, he was nothing more than Sonic with bleeding eyes. But what if he wasn't? The original story sought to demonize Sonic's history and personality. The community decided to take it to the next level and twist the concept into something greater. They did this by utilizing the biggest part of Sonic that JC didn't pay much mind to beyond bleeding eyes. Sonic is shaped like your friend. These creatures aren't. Let's take a dive into the themes of some of the best fan iterations of Sonic.exe. As of July 30th, 2021, for reasons I will not be getting into here, JC the Hyena gave up ownership of Sonic.exe. As of now, Astronomicon X is the official owner. With Johto Boy as the co-owner, Astra made some big changes. Meet Xenofanes. The most notable difference is his crystallized quills. Besides that, not much is different from Xenofanes' original form, nor has Astra done much with the character. It wasn't until the release of the Versus Sonic.exe mod for Friday Night Funkin' where a man by the name of Right Burst Ultra put their own spin on Xenofanes that really amped up the creepy factor. In the intro to the mod, it already comes clear that Burst Xenofanes isn't just a bleeding-eyed Sonic. You have the trademark haunted Sonic 1 intro, but then he stares at you with that creepy smile. And his mouth seems to be... drooping? Every reason to fear Xenofanes is given to you both in the first song and the cutscene preceding it. The art style Burst chose for Xenofanes really helps him come off as uncanny. So much happens during this. In a few flashes, you see hands inside his mouth, an erect, two-pronged purple tongue, and again, what is up with his mouth? And now he's on my screen! Get off! This is the Sonic.exe that originally haunted your dreams when you were a kid. He still has the bleeding eyes, yet he still has Sonic's cartoony gloves and shoes. You thought you had seen it all, but you clearly hadn't. The stuff coming from his mouth is inspired by Lordex by Johto Boy, who was the co-owner of Sonic.exe as mentioned earlier. Those gloves are supposed to be silly and cartoony, and now you're seeing them crawling out of his mouth. Definitely makes them more freaky. One of the more subtle yet noticeable differences about this Xenofanes is that his limbs are lankier, not to mention that his fur is a much darker blue. The lanky limbs become more apparent in his second song, where he also takes on a different form for a brief moment. His eyes look like Sonic's, but the pupils seem a little... big? <laughs> and his mouth is pretty melty. In the third and final song, we see Xenophanes in his true form. His limbs have become the linkiest they've ever been, he has blood at the tip of his fingers, and his quills have finally become crystallized. Let's review. Gloves? They got blood on them. Quills? Crystallized. Limbs? Lanky. Blue? Darker. Eyes? Bloody. 
Muzzle Droopy. Earlier, I stressed that Sonic's design traits were meant to convey the fact that he's your friend. With Xenophanes, Burst sought to mutate and exaggerate those features. Which is just a fancy way of saying body horror. This is the ideology that the original Sonic.exe followed, which is fitting since Xenophanes is the original Sonic.exe, but just evolved. The idea was to twist what made Sonic so friendly into something you fear. It started off with bloody eyes, but eventually the concept was expanded upon, and now we have this horrifying beauty. It's simple, but it gets the job done. But it's still simple. There were still other people in the community that wanted to explore new ideas for a scary Sonic, so let's keep exploring and examine something a little more... wild. <laughs> It's easy to forget, but Sonic is a hedgehog. And as Sonic is a hedgehog, Sonic is an animal. He fights for freedom and stops Dr. Eggman from making industrial advances on his turf. He values freedom. He wants to... go... feral? I don't think this is what Sega had in mind. Okay, so this is an editor's note. I only just started playing Sonic Unleashed like a day after I finished this script and like a day before I started recording this script, so... Shut up. Lord X hails from a Sonic.exe fan game created in 2020 called Sonic PC Port. It was created by Jodo Boy for the EXE challenge, hosted by Austrian content creator Luigi Kid. Up until that point, a lot of Sonic.exe fan games were more or less reskins than the original. Despite Sonic PC Port's glaring gameplay issues, everyone agreed that the atmosphere was unlike anything we've ever seen in a Sonic.exe fan game. And along with this came a new antagonist, Lord X. The first notable difference about Lord X is his coloring. His shoes are completely gray, devoid of color. The blue of his fur is also a lot more pale. Already with these changes, Lord X comes off as a menace. Sonic was given that familiar blue to represent Sega, the cool dudes who created this awesome character. Seeing the color gone like this is just depressing. It doesn't stop there though. As you progress through the game, you start to see these images of him. Look at this man, he's like some sort of werehog. Joe definitely wanted to tap into the fact that Sonic is a hedgehog and wanted to explore the more feral side of it, perverting the ideals of freedom that Sonic stood for. And then there's... this. I don't exactly know how to describe this, but it's terrifying, and I love it. Eventually, Joe got help from a person named John Kuhn to start development of a remake of Sonic PC Port, with the demo already released. Already when you open the game, you can see that trademark sinister smile that Lord X had, reminding you that he's a menacing feral monster. As mentioned, being feral is a big theme with Lord X. Even when he chooses to sport Sonic's traditional look, he still looks creepy, as evident by these death screens during the segment where Tails is running away from Lord X. He flashes that sinister smile one last time as the supposed Sonic title screen starts up. This fucker is a menace! And just when you thought he couldn't get freakier, the demo ends with shit really hitting the fan. I'm writing this part of the script at 2am in bed, and I'm really freaking myself out just thinking about it. The game gives you a fake anti-piracy screen with the Sonic logo in the back, colored black and blue, accompanied with Sonic's Game Over theme, followed by Sonic's Denied sound effect. That's a very specific fear I have. Random off-putting sounds when there's nothing else happening on the screen. Am I alone on that? It's at this moment where Tails tries to communicate with you by sending TXT files to your directory. And then something happens that I've never fucking seen in a video game before. When you tap back into the game after reading Tails' message, the Sonic in the logo reacts, looking very upset, while the text in the error message changes to tell you to ignore Tails. Keep checking the messages and Sonic keeps getting annoyed, giving you the damnedest frown you've ever seen. Sure enough, that was Lord X, and he's still playing games with you. The best part of this entire sequence is that it feels like an error screen that could actually be in a Sonic game. What, with the Majin messages and illegal instructions and whatnot? The entire demo had everything to showcase how terrifying being feral can be in many different ways. 
Lord X takes on many forms, but they all convey the same message. Feral animals, even with hedgehogs, are monsters, and Lord X is no exception. It was only when the 2.0 update for Friday Night Funkins vs Sonic.exe mod came out that we caught the first glimpse of Lord X's redesign, which was done by Jodo Boy himself. Before the update, Lord X was already in the mod, but he was pretty pathetic, barely unique from Xenophanes, and his voice was just an edited version of Tricky's voice from the Friday Night Funkin' mod of the same name. Once 2.0 was here, and everyone finished the awesome finale that was Xenophanes' Triple Trouble, everyone went to input the code that used to take them to Lord X's old song, Execution, and then... Holy shit. There's already a lot to take in. Immediately, the most notable difference is that his fur isn't a pale light blue anymore. It's a pale dark blue instead. His shoes have also become more dark gray. Also regarding his shoes, they have toes now? I don't want to call them toes. They're more like prongs. Either way, they make him look more like a mess. In a good way. Remember, people, we're going feral here. Anywho, there's also something different about the look he gives you. Back then, Lord X would just stare at you with a devilish toothy smile, like he was about to eat you. But here, he kinda comes off as... goofy? And then he hits you with his poses. With the original Sonic.exe, JC the Hyena made it very clear he loves playing games. That concept is definitely explored better here. You can tell Lord X is toying with you, wanting to play with you forever, perverting Sega's ideals. Lord X has made such a name for himself that I have deadass seen people look at him and not realize he's supposed to be Sonic. I'm not joking. Lord X is a monster that has perverted everything that Sega stood for, and by extent, Sonic himself. He's executed so well. It's no wonder he became my favorite Sonic.exe. Lord X doesn't even try to pretend he's your friend, which is a great segue into analyzing the next EXE I have on my list. And let me tell you, this one, unlike Lord X, loves pretending. A Sonic.exe character trying to come off as the real Sonic is not a new concept. L, the original Sonic.exe story has X pose as Sonic before revealing his true colors to Tails. But no one has ever really explored this concept before. It has so much potential, since as I've said before, Sonic is shaped like your friend, and his very unique character design traits express that. Because they are so iconic, people will also notice when these traits are changed, which has happened a few times in Sonic's life. When he became more modernized, he was given gold buckles on his shoes and blue eyelids when his old eyelids had that peachy color. In Sonic Boom, his arms were colored blue, his legs and shoes are wrapped in bandages, and he has a brown neck thing. Do bandanas go around the neck? Is that a bandana? In Sonic Riders, he has six shades and completely new shoes. In the movies, his eyes are no longer connected, and in his beta movie design, Jesus. And then... What would you make of this? I want you to really consider this individual for a moment. Really think about him. Tell me. Is this Sonic? Black shoes? No inner ears? Tufts of fur around the muzzle? Beady eyes? No visible mouth? Is this Sonic the Hedgehog? If you showed this character to someone who has never seen Sonic in their lives, they probably wouldn't think much of it, but if you're a Sonic fan and you come across this imposter, you would know something is wrong. Ladies, gentlemen, and NBs, meet Hog. Originally conceptualized for Friday Night Funkin' by Jack Gore before being made its own EXE, Hog hails from a unique cartridge of Sonic 1 that got in the hands of someone who had their own dev kit and got a bit too nosy. When they realized Sonic looked off, they decided to mess with the game more. It only made the game worse, along with Sonic himself, until the cartridge fried. But not before this Sonic took on one final form. This, my friends, is Scorched. If you originally guessed that Hog is in fact not Sonic, then hopefully seeing Scorched should be proof of your intelligence. Scorched is a 13-foot giant with veiny skin and an unhinged jaw. 
its gloves and shoes are also a part of his body, which means this creature tried to use its biology to trick you. This beast has a lot of similar themes to Lord X in terms of the whole feral thing. Man, this whole time I've been wanting to say ferality, but I'm not 100% confident that's a word. Remember how I said a Lord X doesn't try and pretend to be someone you can trust? That is definitely the vibe I get from Hog's true form, which is such a 180 from his other form, which is the true star of the show. What makes this work is that we've grown so accustomed to the friendly features that make us love Sonic so much. When Hog comes along, we get weirded out, but don't immediately write him off since we're used to Sonic undergoing some tweaks. What I really like about Scorched is that he knows any normal fan of Sonic will see through Hog's bullshit, and so Scorch is completely unhinged. Like, alright, so my black shoes didn't fool you. Fuck it, I'll just become a lanky bastard. Happy now? This is pretty much how it played out in Hog's origin story, and I absolutely love it. I also love how the backstory is simple and doesn't try to be anything more, like with the original Sonic.exe creepypasta where it took itself too seriously. For the cherry on top, it's heavily implied that Scorched created Hog as a vessel for himself, and that Hog has a mind of his own. Hog himself is supposedly very innocent. That's kinda mean. Not only did Scorched try to create a faker in design, but he also tried to make one in personality. As mentioned at the beginning of the video, Sonic's personality is also a huge part of his identity. Jeez man, this character is great. This segment was originally going to be about EXE by Revy, but after serious consideration, I scrapped it while editing the video, and decided to write about Hog and Scorched instead. Revy may have pioneered the faker concept, but Jack just does it so much better. Now, since we're talking about character design features, let's look at the next EXE, who takes advantage of Sonic's most peculiar feature. If I'm going to be completely honest, Sonic himself can make me pretty uncomfortable at times. It mainly has to do with his eyes. Or rather, his eye. Eyes? Eye? How do I refer to this phenomenon? Look, remember how Sega's goal was to make an iconic character and messed around with quirky character design to achieve it? Don't get me wrong, they succeeded and I really love this blue rascal so much. But those eyes, depending on the context, they can be off-putting. I'm mainly thinking about the Japanese box art for Sonic 1. Remember how they changed it when localizing the game? This design went on to inspire his look for the adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog cartoon, and I don't like it. Mainly how his quills go down his back in a straight line. I much prefer the Japanese design, but man, sometimes I am not a fan of how he stares at me. Sometimes I'm weirded out by the fleshy color of his eyelids as well, which changed with Sonic's modernized design. When I'm playing Sonic 1 and I go idle, he looks like he wants to kill me. And the pose he assumes when he dies sometimes makes me jump with the way his eyes widen. And Sonic Schoolhouse. Just Sonic Schoolhouse. Again, all these things are only attributed to classic Sonic. Modern Sonic can stare at me all he wants. Well, minus one scene in Sonic Boom. Jeez. I've been watching all of season 2 as I've written this script. Fun show. Anyways, yeah, scoptophobia. It's the fear of being stared at. Praise be to modern Sonic for not inducing this. What were we talking about? Oh, right, Sonic.exe. Yeah, apparently someone took this feature of Sonic that could already be considered inherently creepy and made an EXE out of it. Ladies, gentlemen, and NBs, meet EYX. Probably the nicest surprise we got so far in 2022. EYX is an EXE created by Kawa16, who was brought to life in a fan game by the hands of Cloudy Crack555 Gamer. Cloudy Jolt Gamer? Cloudy? Jolt? Crack? Gamer? 555? Er, cloudy it is. Anyways, this fan game was made for the 2022 iteration of Luigi Kid's EXE Challenge. <laughs> As you can tell, we've gotten a lot of gems from this thing. Luigi Kid is such a fun guy. The fan game was known as the Sonic Editable ROM. Needless to say, it played completely different from fan games before it. While other fan games consisted of remakes and more polished versions of the original game and creepypasta, the editable ROM, the editable, the, the editable, the, dude, how do I say this? The editable ROM had its own agenda. 
its own levels, its own twists, and its own scares. This included Tails chasing Sonic around Green Hill, the player being confronted by Knuckles, playing as Sonic in the Crystal Lake Zone, and a lot more wacky shit. Describing it in words would do it injustice, so do play or watch it yourself when you have time. You won't regret it. EYX does have a story, but it's not really mentioned in the game. It's partly inspired by the sequel to the original Sonic.exe creepypasta, Round 2, but with less of the bullshit. Round 2 told the tale of a cult known as the Cult of X, who stumbled upon the Sonic.exe disc after it crashed on Earth. They agreed with X's ideology that humanity could be something greater, and so they passed around the disc to random people through whatever convenient means so X could take more victims into his new world. There was a detective who investigated why so many people went missing, and when he discovered it was the work of a cult, it was too late. I can't even be bothered to elaborate on the story beyond that because it was such a mess. But EYX simplified the premise and made it more coherent. There was a cult that worshipped a beast, and they sought a conduit to bring him to life. They found that opportunity by killing off a group of friends that were working on a Sonic ROM hack. They didn't make their presence public. They didn't want to kill the entire human race. They were just a cult that sought a conduit. And it helps that EYX is actually terrifying and not just Sonic but evil. He only slightly resembles Sonic because of the conduit. During the events of the editable... During the events of the editable ROM, EYX is watching you, waiting for his moment to strike. And EYX is really good at this whole watching thing. Every time he shows his face taking on multiple twisted forms of Sonic throughout the game, one thing remains consistent. Eye horror. EYX's main form depicts a tall beast dragging his arms on the floor, sporting Sonic's quills in a different shape, and present where Sonic's eyes should be is one big eye. His other forms look more like Sonic, but his eyes are twisted in some way. I really like this. EYX takes advantage of something I already found scary about Sonic and even improved the original creepypasta. Every time EYX makes his appearance in the editable Do Every time EYX makes his appearance in the editable ROM, I feel threatened. This is what a scary Sonic should be, and I hope to see more from him soon. And trust me, he's getting more. Alright, so originally, I was going to do some honorable mentions of some other EXEs, but I found myself bouncing between a lot. And some even tempted me to write new sections of the video, but I don't want to bloat this video anymore. We've gone over all the main themes I wanted to cover. If you're curious, you can check out the Cult of X wiki. It's a wiki that documents all sorts of fan-made EXEs. You can even submit your own! And if you use Twitter, be sure to follow plenty of EXE creators. You'll come across lots of cool things. There are so many more awesome characters out there that I haven't mentioned in this video. Check the description and I'll talk about some of my personal favorites, and link their creators. <laughs> After spending a while in this community, I wanted to make sure I really got a grasp on what made a good EXE. So among all the other amazing fan creations, I decided to create my own and throw him into the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, meet Zendio. I always knew I wanted to make my own EXE, but I didn't want to jump the gun. It's easy to create an EXE that'll just come off as too similar to any existing ones. The only thing I had in mind from the beginning was the name. A lot of EXE names start with X or EX, and Dio is just Italian for God, which is a huge theme for the original Sonic.exe. The whole I am God thing was pretty dumb to start with, but it's possible for it to be used correctly. Here though, it's nothing more than a name. The idea for the design of the character came to me in bed when I thought, man, I wonder what kind of EXE would look cool and terrifying should they emerge from the darkness. Immediately after that, everything came to me in an instant. It was a huge eureka moment. Zendio has blank white eyes to emphasize a theme of scoptophobia, like I mentioned earlier with EYX. His blue colored fur, which is supposed to represent Sega and all the friendly things they represent, was turned to a dark gray. One problem I always had with some EXEs is that they still sported Sonic's cartoony look, with his funny shoes and whatnot. My solution was to get rid of his body entirely. 
I made his nose pointy when I realized I couldn't get rid of that. Sonic's nose is also a silly cartoony trait, you know. Lastly, I made it so besides a head, he could summon lanky arms through portals. Lankiness is a common theme among many EXEs, and it works well due to how Sonic's limbs are already built like spaghetti. By doing this, I hoped to turn Sonic's cool-looking gloves into an instrument of fear. He was also partially inspired by Marstar Bros. Slash. Mar is the director and composer of the Versus Sonic.exe mod for Funkin'. I don't really have a story for this guy. My current draft is that he's from another dimension, where Sonic doesn't exist, and the entire Earth has been consumed by the Underworld. While other EXEs look like Sonic because they idolized him or there was some disaster linked to a Sonic game, Zendio looks like him to fill the Sonic-shaped hole in his dimension. Zendio is a character I created by applying many principles of designing a truly scary EXE that I've picked up over the months all of which I have relayed in this very video. But most of all, I wanted to make a creature that when coming out of the darkness, looks like they were born from it. By all means, Sonic.exe was something that should have been forgotten, even if it just shocked kids as a fad, kids grow up. But we as a community revisited this concept and turned it into something amazing. We have proved that it is possible to find the correct formula for making good horror content out of existing friendly IPs, and there was no better way to demonstrate it than with Sonic the Hedgehog. I am extremely fascinated at what we have built, and I hope we can keep on building. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. It's been in the works for a very long time. I'm really proud of all the support I've received on my recent videos. Ever since last year when I rebooted my channel, it's been in stasis. But this year, you guys, my new audience, changed that. We're creeping up on 500 subscribers, and I'd be thrilled if we could reach it. I hope you guys are looking forward to some more amazing stuff. I couldn't be doing this without you. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.